today. This okay. is the Halloween week. This is Gentleman Jim the Tailor. Victoria Baylor, the dressmaker. And of course, we are the duo, the tailor and the dressmaker. That's right. Mr. Jim's correct. This is today is Tuesday, October 27th, and we are about four days away from Halloween. Halloween. Now, I personally don't celebrate the Halloween or the, the, the holiday, but I do make costumes for people, and I know everybody likes to dress up. And in honor of dressing up, we dressed up today, so we might look a little bit different to you. Never seen me like this before. <laughs> and likewise. So um, with that being said, we want to start off our show with a little giveaway. So our giveaway will be centered around guessing who we are. Um, take a good look at us. We're going to pose for you a little bit. There we go. You have to guess who we are. Now, Mr. Jim is specifically an individual, and then I am a, a certain professional person. She so um, we're going to give you a couple of hints. But so the way this works is if you can properly guess who we are. Who are you? Oh, that's to be decided. We'll see who how good I? you guys are. Uh, we'll give you some hints in a second. But once you guess, we're going to give away a course to who, one of our free online courses. Um, mm -hmm. We'll give it away to someone. So, Mr. Jim, go ahead and give us some hints. Well, who now, are you? First of all, I'm from the West Coast. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and then what else can you tell them who you are? He's a specific person. Notice, I got some headphones that are real popular. Okay, so if that wasn't a really good giveaway, <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything else that is. And as far as who I am, I'm not a specific person, but I am a professional. Um, and this will kind of give you some hints of who I am. I've done a lot of traveling lately, yeah. and I have. Oh, so. Boy. Uh, with that being said, hold on a second. Please pay attention to my directions. If you see the lights along the floorboard, please follow those. <laughs> Look for the exit rolls. <laughs> Better run fast. <laughs> so that's the hint about who I am. So once you figured out who Mr. Jim is and who I am, please email us. I'll drop the link right on the page. Email us, and at the end, we'll do a drawing, and you'll win a fabulous uh, one of Mr. Jim's courses. So <laughs> that's that. But anyhow, today's course, or this show, is going to be pretty fun. We're going to talk about costume ideas and, like, the quickest yeah. ways to make that happen. Because, mm -hmm. what, we're four days away, right? We're four days away. A lot of times when it comes around this time, mothers or fathers rush to stores to try and buy costumes for their children. A and bit with that hectic. said, it gets hectic, and then all of a sudden, you might have waited a day too late, and all the costumes are gone, or all the costumes that maybe your child wanted to be are gone. That's crazy. And I heard a statistic that on average, the average costume is 70 bucks a person. They sure are. So They're if you have a family of five, mm -hmm. you're getting close to $400 on that mark. That's so true. And That's I know so some true. people, I have friends that I actually make costumes for, they like to pay the top dollar because yeah, they yeah. want to. They're real big costume people. But for everyone else, if you're in a pinch and you just want to dress. When I grew up, you put a bag over your head, you cut the <laughs> eyes and the nose and the mouth out, and you were dressed. There you go. So we're going to show you how to go a step further from that. If you want to take that bag or if you do something else, we have some of our top 10 costume ideas so we'll get started with that right. but before we do we want to give a special shout out don't we mr yes Jack? we do so there is a mr marcus franklin you know who you are you posted yesterday on our facebook page I'm telling you. and he, he created i think it's called you like to call it your ice blue or no i'm sorry your blue ice vest i'll put a picture of him wearing the vest He hooked he's, it up. He sure did. And he said he's been inspired by Mr. Jim. Of course, we know he is the king of vests. I think, didn't you just make like two last week? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Even when he says he's not, he does. He just can't help it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he can't yeah, help yeah. himself. I'm working on some more also. <laughs> so, Marcus, thanks so much. Yeah, you look yeah. great. Thanks. That's a thumbs up, my brother. I'm telling thumbs you. Up. So, you look great. We want the world to know you look great. So, we're going to post your picture. Yes. And if anybody else has anything to share, we'd love to spotlight you. Oh, so, sure. oh, feel sure. free to drop us a line, drop it on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. going to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about costumes. I'm going to bring in my little goodie bin. So we all know 
that costumes, I mean, you can buy the patterns you everywhere, can. right? You so can. here are some patterns. I actually wanted to do this with my daughter this year, but I ran out of time mm -hmm. uh, for like the trick or trunk. But I mean, you know, there's a standard costumes patterns that look like costumes. Yeah. But what we want to do is have people or encourage them to think outside the box too, because mm -hmm. you can take everyday clothing patterns That's right. and make them into costumes. Sure can. So here's a beauty queen costume. If you want to be kind of like a lumberjack or even if you want to like be uh you know a port worker or someone like that that has like yeah, a safety vest yeah. you can convert this vest pattern yeah, and make it to a yeah. safety vest so this with costuming it's always great to kind of push the boundaries right it sure is um through the years i had a lot of clients of mine and they these just happen to have little girls and i would what i would do with them a lot is I would take a t-shirt, just a plain white t-shirt, and I would use the different types of um, uh, inks some or glitter. paints, so we got some the glitter. little glitter, glitter and glue. I would squirt some stuff on there. I would put their name on them, and that's a way you could easily, easily, especially if you have a lot of children. Now, if you want to if you only have one and you really want to go out, that's okay. But all it takes is a little glitter, you know, a little paint and whatnot. You got markers, markers, all kinds of everything, stuff you can do. and just take a T-shirt. Now, when you said that it's seventy dollars for the average costume, you could get away with this for under ten dollars, something like that. Absolutely. You know, now, if you got four children. That <laughs> might be worth thinking about. Yeah. That actually is one of our tips, as you know. So the cotton t-shirt is like a great base. So, you know, mm -hmm. you know and you mm -hmm. can manipulate it. So you can cut the neckline, sure. be it. You can go across. Uh, people, uh, you can rip it in places and give a torn look. Spray paint on it. Mm -hmm. It's a really good canvas yeah, for my manipulations. My children don't do torn. They don't do? <laughs> well, they did. Now they do it now. <laughs> and, you know, you want to transform that into, like, a mummy. So you take yeah, this and then get yeah. some gauze strips yeah. and just sew it around. Sew it around. It's a so lot it's of, really, lot really cool stuff you can do with T-shirts. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things. And also, if you're in a pinch, you know, well... I guess going back to my idea before I proceed on taking regular garments. Well, this is a t-shirt dress I sewed like years ago. Yeah. My goodness. And, um, well, is this a t-shirt dress? Well, the button down. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so it's just been sitting in the closet. I was like, throwing a scarf. I'm a, you know what? You can guess <laughs> what you're guess supposed right. to guess. You know what um, you'll is. know what I am. So that's really cool too, to have look in your closet and look for things you already have that you can convert into a pattern. Sure. Um, some other things is, one of my biggest tips is, for something you're only going to wear one day, one time, yeah. do, do we really want to spend all our time sewing? Not mm -hmm. really. You no. can, yeah. <laughs> but you can cheat in some, uh, some regards. Mm -hmm. So there's things, of course, most people know, most people that don't sew know about this very well. Um, unique stitch, and then I think there's some other names for it, but essentially it's glue. Like glue. That's all it is. Blue. So consider this when you're in a pinch, and especially if you have to add a bunch of stuff to like your t-shirt or whatever you're sewing. Mm -hmm. um, glue guns are great too. Like you really want to think outside the box when it comes to yeah. making yeah. costumes because a lot of what people do is fabric, but don't they intermingle other stuff oh, with it? Oh, absolutely. If you Leathers, put anything, leather on it, lace, and vinyls. And um, if you get really desperate, this stuff is kind of dangerous, it's yeah. hilarious, but contact cement can even <laughs> work. Yeah, that. That's really actually, good leather. Actually, this, like I say, this is a little different. You could use rubber cement. Yes. Because yeah, see, yeah. with rubber cement, when you put it on there and you put something on top of it, you can actually roll it back off. Oh, Oh, yeah, neat. rubber cement rolls off, mm -hmm. you see. So if it was something and you, if you just wanted it to be temporary, use rubber cement. Put your glitter on it, put your this on it, put your that on After the function is over with, you really can, and it'll rub right off. That's right. Rub right off. And then while, it's funny, I'm going all off, mm -hmm. I'm out of order what I planned, but since we're talking about using adhesives, mm -hmm. one main thing I like to do and encourage people is an easy way to, I guess make sure you don't mess up things or glue yeah, your yeah. both sides of your shirts yep. together, which can yep. happen is consider these cheapo little um, cutting mats, the mm -hmm. plastic ones, mm -hmm. and you can just, oh, there you go, just slide, slide it, it right in. on in there. Right. 
And then it's a great base to add whatever you're going right. to add. It gives you a good surface. That's right. You can work on it and you don't have to worry about it sticking. So that's also an extra tip. And while we're talking about gluing things, some other things to consider gluing is if you decide to add some bling to what you have going on. And I love working with jewels and rhinestones and things mm -hmm. like that. Definitely that's how I usually do my setup. And then you got the big one, so you know, say if you're going for a Cleopatra look and you want to, you have something cut out, a costume, mm -hmm. you would put around the neckline. Of course, these beautiful jewels, like things like that, you just slap it down. And mind you, we're not referring to a t-shirt because you can sew your costume, but we're just mm -hmm. talking about embellishing. Mm -hmm. And when you embellish things, of course, make sure you use the proper adhesive. Not all adhesives work for embellishing work, so there are ones that are geared toward doing jewelry yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. The bond is different. Yeah. So. Now, I'll say this, too. That's why I mentioned rubber cement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rubber cement will hold all of this on. Yes, yeah, it's hold a, it's a it tried on, and true you know? epoxy. And then you can, once you finish with it, you can literally peel it off. Now mm -hmm. you gotta wash the shirt again or whatever you put <laughs> it on, but it, it, it'll hold it, and it'll hold it in place because this is, they're gonna be in these costumes for maybe two, three hours at the very most. Yeah. See? So it doesn't have to be a perma bond where it'll stay on forever. That's so. true. That's okay, so now you have an idea about adding the embellishments and things mm -hmm. like that too, and gluing things. So we're going to move the t-shirt out the way and talk mm -hmm. about some other ideas. Um, so also, fabrics. I always find that, and scraps are really great oh, yes. during times yes. of, so I have like a bag of just miscellaneous scraps. If you're making something and you want to be really creative and use patches and other things, oh, look at consult your scrap bag. Oh, and hey, you got one with dollar bills dollar, on I made I made a good friend some sleep pants with dollar bills. I mean, just what, are, you know, you can do a lot of neat texture stuff. Mm -hmm. So in the costume world, their kind of philosophy is just throw like a lot of stuff mm -hmm. on. So. Now let me tell you something about that, see. Think saving money. There you go, right there. It's <laughs> there you go, loud and clear, the message to all of us. And then also go into your fabric stash. If you're a hoarder like I am and you have mm -hmm. fabrics that you know you haven't turned over or used, Think about using yeah, those sure. for, yeah, so yeah. this is like a, now my daughter saw this this morning, so this is hers now, mm -hmm. but um, this is kind of a neat suede and it has some uh, glitter in it. I mean, think about it. I see this, it screams like 70s. Mm -hmm. You can do like a little yeah. uh, cute go-go boots and do a little shift dress, something go short. Into a go, go. Yeah, I'm telling you, party. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> so consult that, consult your fabric stashes for things like that. Also think about using your unconventional fabrics. And it's funny, I am making a Minotaur costume for a client. She just wanted some pants. And I had to, the pleasure of working with fur. We all know how oh, fun yeah. working with fur fun is. Fur. I almost choked last night. I felt like a cat with hairballs. I mean, this stuff was everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> it was everywhere. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, so you have your furs. And of course, if you want to do anything animal-like, mm -hmm. you can use those, which mm -hmm. is really great. Any tips on working with fur, Ms. Jim? I'm going to share some as well. Well, no, not, not really, because what happens is, is, like she said, you have to be careful. It does shed on you. It does. But at least the animal rights people won't be <laughs> after you. You know, throwing stuff on your child because it's real fur. And then plus it's cute, and especially, it's especially cute. for little girls. You know, little girls like to play dress up all the time anyway. Yeah. So a lot of times, rather than them use some scary goblin costume, little girls like to dress up. Yeah. Make them something cute. Let them be a princess or and put something on. Yeah. Or, or a runway model, and they can do their little strut with it and get them some nice shades. Oh, you, you, done, you done spelled out my child. That was easy. I, I know. <laughs> I know her. That is the truth. And you, I mean, you can use it so many different ways. You can line it around boots. Oh, yeah. You can do it around yeah. cuffs. You're right. Yeah. Just a little bit goes a long way. And my only recommendation, that's funny, I got this in my eye now. It's everywhere already. Mm -hmm. Is that when you cut it out, you definitely want to cut it down, pile side down. Yeah. It's yeah. easier. Um, yeah. Try to use 
they say you can make something that has a lot of less seam so you don't see the seam work, but that doesn't bother me because you can usually cover the seam oh, up yeah. with the fur. Yeah, fur will rake right on top of it. I know, it. so it's not really mm -hmm. bad that way. And then depending on how thick, this stuff was pretty thick on my machine. I actually, instead of using a sharps needle, I used, uh, um, I was doing denim hems. <laughs> see, you can do that too as well and build that right in there. Mm -hmm. So there you go. You could do some really cool stuff. That's it. I could be a mountain man with a long <laughs> beard. Throw on a flannel shirt. There it is. But this stuff is everywhere, so I will caution you. Fur is a, a little bit of a beast. But Okay, so that's another way to think about things. And then also, weird stuff. I mean, let your imaginations kind of roll. Paddings, whether it's uh, shoulder, shoulder pads, pads yeah. um, any other kind of pads, you can use them in ways you didn't expect to use them, whether it's just elevating something or adding texture or depth. Mm -hmm. You can use that. You know, the, and I don't know if kids do that anymore, the old Frankenstein monster had all those pads up in his yeah, shoulder, yeah. His big square shoulders yeah. and whatnot. He wasn't built like that. That's tr that's true, and that is a great way. I'm happy you said that. It's a great way actually to build up even muscle in the costumes. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. see all these little kids with like the Superman the or those costumes. They just they work good, huh? Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> be some muscle. Pad it on up. That looks like a bicep right there. Yeah, it that's really what I'm does. Saying, yeah. <laughs> uh oh, he's going for it. <laughs> going for it. Man. Going for it. So you just really do it up. Come on, muscle. There you go. Get in place. That's right. That That's a spectacular <laughs> bicep. <laughs> that is, yeah. There you have it. All from just using insert pads. So here you go. Real simple. <laughs> so yeah, so that's something to think about as well. And then to round it on out, let's see, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Also with trims, trims are really great ways to add splash and color and dimension and a little bit of pizzazz to costumes. And don't limit just using one, which is no. fun. You can layer them. So most people, and I don't usually think like this, but having worked in, in costumes recently, I realized you just add things on top of things. And if you're a little bit unnerved by that, my recommendation is, is to take a step back and look at it if you're yeah. unsure. You know, it's just like, is that too much? Because sometimes looking at things up close don't work. And then this has holes in it, so you can actually weave in the that? stuff too. So that's kind of neat. Yeah. yeah, so you just kind of do it. And that's a little loose yeah. lace and just go with that. But oh, yeah. anyhow, yeah. and then think about that. If you're doing a period piece, like a mm -hmm. 1930s mm -hmm. flapper dress, you can put that around the perimeter, mm -hmm. put that around the base. Mm -hmm. These are a lot less expensive than just buying a costume. That's right. It shows your originality. Your child, <clears throat> excuse me, the fur's got him. It has a lot uh, of fur right now. Your child now has a costume that's totally different than everybody else's. Doesn't Absolutely. look like your little typical princess or pirate. And even with the boys, you can make a little pirate costume with them. Mm -hmm. You could take some of the rhinestones, you know, the pirate had an earring or That's something right. like that. Or they had uh, a bracelet with a lot of jewelry around it. And these are all the fun things. First of all, first of all, you have fun doing it. Yeah, Especially if you involve great. your child in it. That's right. Opposed to you do it and say, here, wear this then he could feed on or she could feed on ideas that they would like on that. And you got all of this and then you let the child get involved with helping you embellish it mm -hmm. so that it becomes a family project. It's fun. And remember, you have the advantage. You don't have to be stuck to that $70 no, per person no. price tag, not unless you choose to, but as a sewer, we can make things happen. And what I really like to do is, and I'm sure Mr. Jim does, because we do it by profession, is oftentimes we recreate things. Absolutely. So Absolutely. in their easiest and simplest form, don't be intimidated. Look at a costume, mm -hmm. break it down, because it's a basic silhouette. That's all it is. Whether it's, it it's, it's going to be a bodice, whether it has darts in it, seaming, but mm -hmm. look for the base of what it is. You can get a pattern for that make that and then add those layers to create what you want to create like angel costumes are easy they're just like yeah. a big oversized yeah. tunic and mm -hmm. then people go crazy with making the wings so stuff mm -hmm. like that think about and then to round out and kind of finish it also i failed to mention stitch witchery is great so you have to finish your costume you don't want to right. look too jagged if you're doing a hem job yes. 
Press it down. There you go, with a little bit of iron action. And then also when you're working with like some, I think polyesters and things like that, that are burnable, they burn. you can definitely finish off the edge with a lighter yeah. and kind of se yeah. sear now, that. don't let your children do that. Don't, yeah, that's, <laughs> that'd be a hot mess. It, like hot literally, mess. hot mess. <laughs> So that's our tips and suggestions, and we hope that by kind of throwing some of these ideas out, we've, if you've had any kind of creative blocks, sure, you've gotten sure, over those, sure. and that, you know, hey, who cares? You have four mm -hmm. days. Don't be intimidated mm -hmm. by that. Mm -hmm. You can still make something happen, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I um, was on Facebook, and somebody saw a, they saw a coat, and they wanted to know where could I get this pattern, and it's just like I tell everybody. You could take this pattern and make that pattern. Absolutely. So don't be intimidated by whatever you do in sewing. Because, honestly, sewers are really the most creative talent out. They really are. Because everything that we do in the fabric, fabric is done in fabrication form, accessories, right. add-ons, and everything That's else. Right. Other industries use a harder substance and they make something out of that. We make things out of nothing. So don't be intimidated by whatever you challenge there. That's right. That's great advice. That's great advice to end on. So, hey, we're not going to hold you up anymore. Mm -hmm. Turn off this t the TV. Uh, well, if anything, turn on, you know, I tell people you can get inspiration. If you're not quite sure what you want, mm -hmm. always just get like, see something that you like or several see? things take those elements combine them see? but either way see? go go ahead and just go ahead and make it happen and then send us pictures if you That's do right. so yeah, that'd be love really to great see we'd love what to you've that. done creatively we see a lot on youtube facebook everything but usually what they've done is they've taken a pattern whoever it is and and, and we want to recognize who we're using. Yeah, absolutely. But they make it identical. It's just the fabric is different. Get creative and move it around a little. That's right. I check every pattern and I never make this. I've never made the same thing twice in my life. Never. 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 Some way I'm going to change something there. So that shows a, a, a little more originality in how I perceive that pattern. That's right. You know, I don't have to make it a cookie cutter carbon copy of I'm gonna make something different so once again we enjoyed being here with you this is gentleman Jim the tailor and Victoria Baylor professional dressmaker don't forget to go email us who you think we are dressed West as Coast. <laughs> and then we'll announce that winner next time and we will be in touch soon so take care and have a wonderful have weekend have a wonderful weekend <laughs> bye, bye